two. The Noon News Hour with Doriana Temelo, substituting for Deborah Hope. Good afternoon. How could it happen here in Vancouver? The images from last night's riot are more what we'd expect to see in a big American city. Today, the reaction to last night's fighting and looting ranges from disbelief and shock to anger and embarrassment. The city jails are overflowing. As many as 200 people were hurt, and one 19-year-old man hit in the head with a police rubber bullet is in critical condition on life support and not expected to survive. Pictures from last night's Malay are being flashed around the world, tarnishing the reputation of this city. While in New York, the celebrations were peaceful and joyous. In Vancouver, it was unbelievably different. Most of today's newscast is devoted to what happened, and a warning. It contains some strong language and scenes of violence. Stu McNish was one of the NewsHour reporters covering the rioting last night, and he's returned today to his vantage point at Thurlow and Robson. Stu? Uh, Doriana, this uh, street section, uh, street corner right here, wound up being the epicenter of what uh, turned out to be a very, very nasty scene. It started off uh, fairly slowly, just as the game wound down. There were about a thousand people that descended on the area, but they were die-hard partygoers. I don't know that you would even call them die-hard Canucks fans. They came down here with the intent of uh, taking over the street and partying, and slowly the energy that was there started to build. Um, as we can see in the tape of, uh, uh, of what happened last night, uh, the, the city just started to come to a halt down here as there were, they, they believe somewhere between 40 and 50,000 people that took to the streets. At this point, it was a pretty peaceful evening, but then it turned into a, a mosh pit with this slam dancing here, and that broke out into occasional uh, fist fights. This wound up giving the crowd the sort of energy or fuel that it needed to get uh, destructive eventually. What they wound up doing from here was uh, uh, just series of these kind of, of, of exchanges. Nobody really got hurt at this point, but then uh, at this street corner they started pounding on, on uh, the construction work there. The tension was building, the police were starting to get concerned, they were moving in. Up to this point, the police presence was, wasn't really noticed, but then this van started to be pounced on, and then the crowd became more and more anxious, trying to, to overturn it. You can see that the police tensions there were starting to grow, they were trying to keep people back. Lots, this was the first arrest that we noticed, and this was one of the fellows that had been in that slam dancing area. By now, the, the tension on the street was really starting to build. You could, you could sense that something was coming. They turned that van into a bizarre kind of dance floor for this fellow, and he was able to hang on for, for a few moments as they tried to overturn this van. Fortunately, they didn't have the strength to do that, otherwise people could have really been hurt. But th right near here, where this fellow is with the Stanley Cup, it was the event that started to ignite what would happen. There was one of these people up on, these, on this pole started to do a high wire act and as he was walking across now that's the stanley cup falling down but as as a fellow was walking across he fell to the crowd that way and uh, the police witnessed that happening <laughs> you can see that uh, the tension started to grow here with people kicking out signs like that angry at this fellow, the people on the street, they were wanting to, uh, to get back at him and, and so then the police were trying to protect uh, party goers from one another. Then Dorian, as the, as the evening escalated, there was of course the event where the, where the fellow fell and uh, that is what ignited the whole thing. Um, in this environment here, there's somebody. Uh, there was, there were two people like this. This fellow seemed to almost inspire the other one, um, who fell into the crowd. You can see the police trying to move to him, 
to prevent him from being trampled to death. Uh, then they were trying to get the ambulance in, which was difficult. They had a neck brace on him. And as the ambulance was, was pulling away, you could see that the police were really starting to become concerned about uh, the violent sort of edge of this crowd. And they started to push them back very quickly uh, from the center of the intersection there at Robson and Thurlow. There was a, a, a quick flurry of movement. You'll see it here in just a moment. You can see the out comes the capstan spray. Uh, the police are really on edge at this point. Things are being thrown at them. And there was just an incredible sort of rush of movement as they moved people back. And then in came the riot gear, shields, gas masks, batons. They were bashing the batons on their, on their shields and, and pushing people back. Now at this point, instead of having a group locked in one area, the police started to push them out in waves in, in different directions. But before they did that, they stalled at this point, and it, it was as though they were, were being taunted by the crowd. A lot of people fled the area, but the police then got prepared to move them down Robson Street. This was shortly after about 10.30. This fellow got, got shot in the back by a tear gas canister as he was trying to help a woman. Windows started to be broken. There was looting uh, down, up and down the entire length of Robson Street. There was looting on Granville Street, Georgia Street, Seymour, and we heard reports as far away as Main Street the glass being broken and, and the partying uh, trying to go on in, in the midst of all of this. It went on like this for roughly two and a half hours with these uh, street skirmishes between police and uh, it's, it's hard to say whether or not they're Canucks fans or people who are just bent on, on some sort of destruction. Overturning a police car there. Around midnight, the police ran out of tear gas and gas masks and had to wait for about 15 minutes to get uh, more tear gas and it, reinforcements. And it, it was uh, around this time that the RCMP came in and, uh, and provided them with the reinforcement they needed. There were hundreds of people that were arrested. And there was just this constant sort of uh, confrontation back and forth between the police and uh, party goers. That's what we can call them. Hooligans. It's a disturbing scene. Canada, sort of a weird end to this riot. He's a couple of blocks away from the riot. Just uh, very, very strange behavior, uh, Doriana. Um, as it wound down, the police were uh, still trying to move people out of the area. They were extremely firm in, in, in trying to get people to move out, and if you didn't, then they responded uh, quite quickly. And then as we were out on the street from midnight till about two o'clock in the morning there were countless people coming up to us talking about cases of police brutality and of course there is that one incident uh, where 
uh, someone has been left in the hospital uh, seriously injured from this. There are, of course, a lot of questions that have been raised about the way the police dealt with this whole issue. And